How you doing? Yes, sir. Registration is right down there. There's two red tables if you have not registered already. All right, thank you. Register. <laughs> Good morning. How you doing? Yes, ma'am. Oh no, no, no! I'm not a vendor. I am here just observing. Did you pre-register? I did not. Okay. Then you're gonna go to the curtains on the right. Okay. Thank you. You too. That's available in three different sizes too, uh, and that will be on there as well. And we'll have instructions on how to press them. It's accessibility friendly, so there's, it works with screen readers, it works with magnifiers, it works with everything you'll need it to. Um, and that'll be available in April, um, again, all three. And I don't know if you're at all aware of the current state of stuff with 3D printing, but if you go onto the places where you can find the files, it can be kind of hit or miss, it can, you, can hit, you can see inappropriate stuff. So I can't in good mind send students there. So creating a object library that students will be able to interact with that will grow out to include stuff with like history resources and science resources, uh, as well as the system tech, that'll be a curated library with instructions, everything will be Everything from, you know, interact or, or refreshing a browser to how do I turn on screen readers or how do I hook up my monitors and this has like cord guides and where to plug in use cases. Um, also, uh, not with me today, but we have, as part of the series, a file guide to say all the different files there are, like PowerPoint, Word, and tell you how to open those up. And those are on our know-it-all platform. Everything we have here is uh, free except for our renewal courses. These are mostly for educators, but we do field trips, we do group trainings, we do PD, we do uh, events in the community, we all do all sorts of stuff. Also on know-it-all, um, and someone can go on that website and request these items, and some 3D printer will print them into the board. So my uh, thought with that is and how I approached uh, these companies about having the most on our website is I want to promote students printing stuff for other students at the school, the SPED program and stuff like that. So that's the idea with the first uh, series for that. We're going to expand that to be social studies, science, all sorts of stuff.
a lot of times parents will often not give prostheses because they'll just an acre and on it and they'll right. grow out of it or five. Exactly. But you can three print a prosthetic for a hundred, two hundred dollars, that then if something breaks on it, print a new part. If they grow, print a new part. That's, that's so really cool. that's the idea behind it. There's a lot of organizations that do a lot of stuff like that. Really cool. um, now what is this for? So this mounts to the top of your arm if you need a grip assistance. This isn't to replace a prosthetic. Mm. So this is like the base model for it. There's different ones that do more things. Like the, there's one that like grips coffee mugs and stuff like that. But uh, a strap would go around here mm -hmm. and a strap would go around here. Uh, so that when I flex my wrist like this, mm -hmm. it would engage the claw. No. Oh. So it would help me like grip stuff and grab stuff. That is so, really neat. Um, all of these things don't take that long to print. Pretty much everything here was under an hour. This took about a day, but as most expensive it's different colors. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, I know. Hi, I'm Furman Fortner. I work for SCETV Education. I'm here displaying some of the 3D objects we'll have available on Know It All in April. This is a one-handed book holder that I can use to hold open a book like that. Um, there's also uh, line readers and stuff that go out for books. We have a key turner that we can mount a key into and then use it to uh, help turn. Button pushers and door grabbers, um, bag assist uh, or carrying assist for when you're carrying groceries. This helps open bottles. So if I wanted to open the bottle up, I could use this to help if I didn't have the grip strength. Toothpaste squeezer and then different kinds of uh, pencil and utensil holders. And then this is an assistive arm that would mount onto your arm like this. So this would mount to your hand and this part would mount to your wrist. And when you flex your wrist, it would engage the call like that. And this was all made with? A 3D printer. Uh, we use an Ender 3 at the office uh, at e CETV. Um, and yeah, we have a great time doing this kind of stuff. So Marvelous, thanks. All right, so who do we have here, sir? This, this is Marty Douglas with uh, Mobility Works. Okay. And uh, one of our products is the new design of uh, uh, hand, uh, grab bars. Mm -hmm. This one goes over the toilet. A lot of people, you know, would use the toilet thinking a toilet uh, roll holder would <laughs> support them when they mm -hmm. lift up the toilet. Well, this goes into the studs. And they can put their hand here and then not mess with the toilet paper here. Oh, that's nice. Push themselves up. That's nice. This one right here, it goes over the shower uh, water controls. Got See? you. So and grab on to yeah, it. When they're turning the shower here, they're hanging on to here. Boy, y'all got to figure it out. Yeah, that's just your modern day grab bars. Nice. Uh, you know, you got your towel rack bar now. Instead of hanging on to the towel rack, you got your grab bars. And they got grips on the inside and they go into the studs. So they will not come out of the wall. Good stuff. That's nice. And there you go. And you said we got this brand new van sitting over yeah, here. Yeah, I got a brand new van. How are we doing? Doing well, doing well. What can you tell me about this marvelous piece of machinery here? There's a lot to it. So we take a regular minivan mm -hmm. and we convert it so that wheelchairs can actually go in or scooters. That's nice. This one is an in floor, so the ramp actually goes inside the flooring. Okay. And the vehicle kneels down to help with that incline. Oh, man. Clients can sit here in the middle, mm -hmm. or they can pull, the, we can, this uh, seat actually rolls out. Okay. And they can sit in here, or if they're a driver, the driver's seat can roll out. Marvelous. So you all have all types of functionality figured out in here. Oh, yes. I like that. I see how you got more space on the seats, the floor. Oh, I like this. And these models are the first hybrids that were actually able to be converted like that. Really? Yep. Let's see, what's this, a Sienna? Yep. Oh, that's... Parking lot is barely a parking lot left because there's yeah, so many. Yeah, but everybody vehicles. sees it. You get a lot of free advertising people riding by. I mean, yeah. Between Harvest and Well, I mean, really, truly.
Mm -hmm. this big. All right, who do we have here today? So here you have Bellman and Symphon. Mm -hmm. We design and manufacture assistive technology for hard of hearing and deaf people. And what you're going to listen to here is the three different solutions that we have. Mm -hmm. We have solutions for home to keep our users, again, hard of hearing and deaf, mm -hmm. independent and safe, communicated with friends and family. We have a set of different alarm clocks. Okay. And we also have a set of hearing amplifiers and devices. So I can go into detail and explain to you a little bit more of what Ooh, each of them Is that does. a carbon monoxide alarm over yes, there? Yes, sir. Oh my goodness, that is beneficial. Carbon monoxide and fire alarm system okay so yes ma'am tell me what we got so, excuse me basically you have all yes of different um different systems here that basically will alert and go into a receiver mm -hmm. so for example you have someone that needs to ring the doorbell mm -hmm. so they would use this device it would ring the doorbell Oh and wow! The doorbell, it will notify oh, wow. any of these receivers. That's nice. That the customer has purchased, whether it's so you got a visual, you got a vibrating, and you got the audible. That is nice. Correct. Uh, if they have a telephone landline, mm -hmm. they can use this device to connect their phone, and they will also be notified the same way. If they have an incoming call, it would do the same type okay. of vibration patterns. Um, also, this one, let me see here. This one over here is you can put it next to your existing doorbell. Okay. And what it does is it would pick up the time of your existing doorbell. Okay. And then notify all of these receivers. Nice. That someone is at the door. Nice. Now this one also can notify your cell phone because it's Bluetooth activated. Oh man, so you just get all kinds of notifications. Yes. I like that. We have also one that is a baby cry for anyone that has a baby. Really? And they want to hear their baby, you know, sound or crying. It acts like a baby monitor, but it picks up the sound. And then when it picks up that sound, it sends it to the receivers. So just different ways of increasing the visibility of communication. Yes, it's like depending what you need, fire protection. Oh, I love it. And see, oh, the doorbell, your phone anywhere in the house where you can have all of these transmitters and receivers where you feel the most comfortable listening to that side. Hmm. Now this one here, a lot of people like to have this receiver mm -hmm. because they can have it with them. Ah, I got you. And not only does it vibrate with different patterns mm -hmm. depending on what notification they need to listen to, mm -hmm. it also has different color lead coatings. So that's tell nice. when it's fire, when it's baby, when it's Oh, baby. that's nice. And it has also different vibration patterns. Yes, ma'am. So it's very portable. This one is for someone that wants to be outside chilling and the backyard mm -hmm. you know it has very loud sounds so gotcha. again it, it, you can also notify them what else? I can go over some of our alarm systems mm -hmm. so the alarm system here is basically you would program your alarm oh, clock to wake you up when the alarm comes on it's gonna have thriving root low uh, you know you'll have to get uh, an alarm set up but mm -hmm. it would vibrate and have color lids and this would vibrate very strong gotcha so it's gonna try real hard to wake you up <laughs> yes. yeah. also if you get a phone call this is also going to be programmed to receive your phone call okay and notify you we have this this here too that you can put on your phone and oh, when that's you nice. Get a phone call, our text message 
it would vibrate and notify you as well. Nice. Uh, so that's really helpful. Another very cool alarm that people love is this one right here that he has. Just wait. And he is basically showing it right now. It okay. works with our app. That's an alarm. Like you can see that? Yeah. It's <laughs> but, not only is it oh, it's not that exact. Yeah, you see? He oh, receives good. text messages, hmm. phone messages, has the same color coded LED lights, mm -hmm. and it vibrates very strong. And people love that because look how portable it is. It's nice. You can take it on the go without having to carry a big clock or anything. The That's charge nice. lasts two weeks, and it only takes an hour and a half to charge. Oh, wow. That's very convenient. Yes. Then we can move in here to our devices, and I'm going to show you this one. This one is really helpful for any individual who really does not want to hear um, things way too loud to bother their family or friends, or yes, they don't want to have hearing aids yet. Yes, ma'am. So they would use this together with earbuds or with headsets. Mm -hmm. With this, they can not only pick up a phone call that could be, say, that the phone is in the kitchen. They can pick up the phone call and clearly listen to the conversation. Got you, got you, got you. They can listen to music, a podcast. Also, if they want to, they can also stream their TV set. Oh, wow. And and this way they can manage the volume in the TV set. That's nice. So that they are listening to it perfectly without having to bother family or friends or neighbors with the TV being way too loud. So really individualizing what it is that you need to the point where not only are you able to participate, but the, comp the compromises that you have aren't making it so that it's uncomfortable for someone for else. Others. I got correct, you. Correct, correct. Then we have here this device, which is fantastic. So imagine that you are in a setup of a very noisy environment. Yes, ma'am. You know, Here, earlier. <laughs> you know, and you just want to be able to listen to All righty, who do we have here? Hi, so I'm Cariella, and my service dog, Astra, is here with me. We are with Canines for Disabled Kids. We're a national 501c3 nonprofit. We work to help people who are interested in finding a service dog on what type of dog they need, where they can go to obtain the dog. We also provide educational presentations and trainings around the world. Marvelous. And if someone needed you all services, where would they need to go to get in yeah, contact? Yeah, so with they you? can go to our website, which is caninesforkids.org. They can also use my personal information on my business card there, or we have our general information on this brochure as well. Awesome. And they can contact us and talk to any of our team. Awesome. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Yeah. Astra, um, she looks like she's just chilling out, maybe begging a little bit, but she's actually alerting to the change in my blood sugar. She's letting me know that right now my blood sugar is dropping, and she'll alert to both highs and lows, and that allows me to treat as needed so that I don't um, pass out or go into ketoacidosis. Yep, we got the mannequin sitting right out there in the street. Let me slide right by you. So everything that you all have is going to be catered more so towards the children, correct? Yes. Oh man, this is awesome. So yeah, oftentimes we'll have people coming in and they may need something and very, very rarely do we have things that are going to be able to accommodate, especially to the degree of what I see right here. Well, yeah, take our information, Mr. Legray. This is nice. What am I looking at? Ballpark or something? Like that? First time we could afford it. Yeah. Let's get you back. I don't know. 
Excuse me, sir. So while you're offloading your sitting bones, you have to have somebody that has sensation, and they're going to tell you, all right, finally I, I don't feel my sitting bones anymore, it's because that gel starts to migrate towards the front of these channels, but once they tell you that information, you then, with them still on the chair, shove this in, so it prevents any of the gel from leaking into further forward. And mom, if they get tired, they can just put the sit down Yeah, yeah, Mary, yeah. Her last name. Um, she's yeah. someone I posted. She's 
like, here, Darcy. You yeah. got, a, got a good one. <laughs> Tell me what you got going on. Sure. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm with the uh, Brain Injury Association of South Carolina. I'm the Veteran Outreach Coordinator. Today we are at the South Carolina AT Expo. We're looking at all the assistive technology uh, for types of disabilities in South Carolina. The Brain Injury Association specifically, we provide mostly information and referral services to anybody in South Carolina with a brain injury. Uh, whether that be looking for housing, financial, uh, medical, anything technology related, you call us, we have a database, we will find it for you. Uh, we also do education, prevention, uh, we educate uh, law enforcement, we educate uh, medical teams, families, all about brain injury, what to expect, um, and we put on a lot of events for the community. We have uh, art, yoga, uh, legislative lobbying, if you will, activism uh, for brain injury awareness, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we do quite a bit. Yeah. So give me an idea, how do I get qualified even knowing that whatever it is that I may have experienced falls under the parameters of what you all cover? How do you get qualified? Yeah, so like say for instance, if, if something may have happened, um, had a concussion, but I don't, it either goes undiagnosed or, you know, just kind of sweep it under the rug or I'm not quite aware of what the next steps may need to be. That happens all the time. People call us and they say, this happened back in 1980. Mm -hmm. I've always expected that it may be the cause of the way, you know, my memory is or mm -hmm. the way my, my temper is. And uh, that may be the cause, that may be the case. Or perhaps you had a brain injury 10 years ago, maybe things are getting worse and you need to have it reevaluated. Got you. Uh, so a lot of times people will call us and we will refer them to people that do evaluations for okay. brain injury. Okay. Um, a lot of times they're having trouble with their own doctors because it was so long ago. Um, but we can get them sent to someone who will evaluate them, do the proper x-rays, do the proper medical history, and see if things, how things are going. Cool. Yeah. All right. So introduce yourself, if you don't mind. Cheryl English, um, program coordinator. I work with Developmental Disabilities Council. We exist under the ADA Act, and what we do is we give grant funds to those persons with um, develop, 
those agencies and organizations that work with people with developmental disabilities, mm -hmm. like Family Connection in response to the AT Conference. We're getting ready to do, um, you know, we work with Able South Carolina. They do the work, we get the credit. I always Marvelous. say we're the, money behind, we're the money behind a lot of stuff that goes on. Okay. But our biggest thing is um, we brought our partners in policy making class in-house. And it is a totally free program for those school age, for parents with school age children okay. and individuals um, with disabilities. That's very and, valuable. Yeah, and what we do is we teach them how to advocate for themselves. Yes, ma'am. Five months a year, and it is totally free, one week in a month, and we reimburse for mileage. If respite is needed, we don't provide it, but we reimburse for it. Okay. We provide the hotel, we feed you. And like I said, just bring in the wealth of knowledge so when people actually understand, they know how to advocate for themselves. So it sounds like you all are able to comprehensively support from the standpoint of giving people access to resources that they may not otherwise realize that they have access to. So where you were saying, okay, well, I got a doctor's appointment. I got to go here. I got to go there. And I don't have the money for it. Well, if you can come up with the money for it, we'll reimburse you and things of that nature. And just making certain that they've got what they need to get where they need to go. And, and those those um, partners that we bring in will mm -hmm. teach you how to do that and gotcha. how to advocate and work with the system. Gotcha. But the, the beauty is, is that kind of once you go through that program, so many people like our agency exists because 60% of persons with developmental disabilities are on the council. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you all are represented by yourselves. Yeah, I got exactly. you. I got the you. other 40% are service agencies. Yes, ma'am. So the money that's being funded is not, the decision is not made by us. Yes, ma'am. It's ma made by people with developmental disabilities. Got you. And so they know what they want. Got, they you, want. got you. Got and you. Got you. believe it or not, they're the ones that sit on the board, but they also go through our partners in policy making class. Marvelous. And these same people are the ones that stand up and tell the legislators, hey, I'm, I'm not retarded. Get the laws changed. I understand. On, I'm, a, I'm a person. I am a person. So, Treat me as such. And, and that's exactly what we do. And then we support those other agencies, you know, through our grant funding. We're working with TASK. They're working with ABLE, our family connection. And so we kind of partner with all that just to make sure it it happens, that we keep that circle go going and growing Marvelous. at the same time. So. Marvelous. Well, I certainly appreciate that, and I'm going to make sure to document a good amount of this information so anybody that wasn't able to attend today, they can at the very least know what you got going on, and they can get in contact with you. Let's see. And Andre, I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. And this is about our housing survey. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything to do with us, but what we're trying to do, and that's what you have right there, mm -hmm. is we're trying to find out how many people need affordable housing. Ooh. There's a lot of people need affordable housing. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So you don't know the need until they tell us. You know, you can't just say it to For the blind, we are um, statewide. We have um, three main offices: Greenville, Columbia, and Charleston. Okay. And we provide vision rehabilitation to adults and children throughout our state. Um, we have the Vision Institute school-based services, which we go into the school district and um, provide educational and training purposes in the schools. Mm -hmm. And then we also offer adult services where we provide a screening and then um, services that align with what your goals are for an individual with visual impairment. And then we also offer an ICANN Connect program, which is for individuals with um, deafblind needs as well. Um, so that um, that provides um, communication, equipment, and training for individuals in South Carolina. So that sounds very comprehensive. Yes. So we we say that we um, serve individuals from birth to 149. But from what you need to, in, to get up in the morning to what you need to go to bed at night, we provide all that with no vision assistance um, from a sighted uh, guy. Marvelous. Yes. Well, I certainly appreciate yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Well, we're excited to be here. Yeah, I'm going to share this. to so, so hopefully we can motivate someone that wasn't able to make it today to come out next That's year. That's what we like to hear. Well, thank you for doing what you're doing. All right. Well, I yeah, so just introduce yourself and let me know what we got going on All here. All right, so my 
My name is Stephanie Turner. I'm the Autism Division Director at the South Carolina Department of Disabilities and Special Needs. Today we are at the Assistive Technology Expo really spreading the word about what we have here at DDSN. So first and foremost, if anybody with intellectual disability, a related disability, autism spectrum disorder, or head and spinal cord injury is out there, I would hope that they're also in with our agency. This is the best way to try to figure out if they are in with our agency. We'll put them on three up to three different waiver wait lists and that has over 26 services that they wouldn't otherwise get if they just had Medicaid. And then we have an upcoming Autism Connect conference in Columbia on April 23rd. We would love to have people come. I That's love it. the free promo code if anybody would want to come and just learn about the resources and supports we have in our community. Marvelous! So this sounds like a wealth of information and resource. We got a bunch. We would love to Tell the people what we have. Get it out there. So give me an example of, say for instance, once I get signed up, if I'm, if you all are able to recognize that I do qualify for your services, what types of things would you all be able to help me with? So the interesting thing about autism is it's a spectrum disorder. So mm -hmm. I think about autism because I'm the autism division director. Yes, so somebody with autism would qualify for our IDRD waiver, the intellectual disability and related disability waiver. One of the things that people ask me all the time is if somebody elopes, which means they you know, see an open space and they run for it, mm -hmm. they would benefit from having a fence. Fences are expensive. DDSN can help pay for that under our environmental modifications. That's really? An yeah. Um, the other example is mom, dad, grandma, whoever's caretaking for them needs a break, right? And so we pay for respite services as well. Wow. Family support funds because special needs summer camps are expensive. Um, we have some durable medical equipment. Some, I love it. I mean, really adult attended care, adult day health care, just it runs the gamut. So what really just overall needed? supportive services. We try. We That's try. all right. Yeah. So it sounds like you all are really able to kind of fill in the gaps and of education and resources where people may not have been aware of what it is that they need or even how to get it. Right, right. And we're primarily the funder. We'll help you can connect you with those resources in the community and okay. then help pay for them. So we're kind of like Medicaid because we're a state agency. Yes, ma'am. But we're kind of like a hub for that too. Okay, good stuff. Yeah. Well, I certainly appreciate it. And I'm going to take Andre. some of this information. Thank you very much. I'm right behind you. Okay. I'm right behind you. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, taking pictures, are you? Man, I'm taking a little video because I am completely enamored with these things that you have. And I'm gonna be posting this to our YouTube channel so we can share this with some of the people that weren't able to make it today. So Humanor has products for visual impaired. So on the right side of my table, mm -hmm. you have all the blindness products, so Braille displays with Perkins, okay. or with QWERTY keyboards. You have Braille displays and you have note takers. Okay. And uh, one device there that's called the Odyssey, which is a screen reader. So basically, you put a page under. Oh it wow! Button, it takes a picture and reads aloud. So very that's easy to nice. Use, you know. And that has like AI built in. And on the left side, you have all the low vision stuff. So the Reveal 16 with mm -hmm. speech. And I love this device because basically Be you can say, Be connected. start reading there. I'll make it bigger. Here, let's start reading here. Be smart. Be connected. Oh, wow. And it's Video just chat with your best friends. And oh, so wow. So we're taking a document that's on and reading it aloud. Check your emails. And you can Watch slow it down. Show. You can Shows speed it on up. YouTube. You can stop it. You can visually read if you wanted to. Wow. So it's all touch screen, you know. This is the newest uh, device that Reveal 16. And basically, you can press one button and see the live image under. Oh, wow. And you have distance being also. Oh, wow. So the same camera you is used for both. And this is all in the battery. Yeah. That's so, amazing. And then you have 5 inches, 8 inches, 12 inches of very simple magnification. No okay, way. so the similar technology, but just Correct. in smaller. And then you have the 12 inch with speech. So this and this is the same, right? The Connect 12 and the Real 16i is the same. Okay. And then you have two small devices. This is called the Victor Reader Stream. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, like an iPod for the blind. Mm -hmm. So you can read books or listen to music or download books. 
on the source card, you can do that. Wow. And this is a GPS for the So it tells you where you are, what's coming up, what's on your left, what's on your right. Wow. Uh, how to get to point B if you want to. Okay. And like, for example, if you're on the bus mm. and you want to know where you are. Yes, sir. You just don't rely on the bus driver. You know, he's got a bus to drive. Got you. So you know where you are. Marvelous. Man, well, I certainly appreciate that. Hey. Let me give you my card. Yes, sir. And if you post this, just let me know and I'll be. Yeah, so you can just introduce yourself and tell me what we got going on. So, I'm Jerry Meriden. I'm with Vespiro. Mm -hmm. And under the Vespiro uh, company, we have a couple brands. We have Enhanced Vision, which is a brand that makes low vision products for, let's say, uh, disabled veterans is where you primarily find that. Mm -hmm. Freedom Scientific is kind of our employment brand, but we also do low vision to no vision. Got some papers down here that just highlight our software, JAWS the Screen Reader, which mm -hmm. is speech and braille for someone that has no vision on a computer. Zoom Text, which is a sister product, which is a screen magnifier on a computer, PC computer. Big, small, changing color. So you would see that kind of simulation here. Although this is not Zoom Text, we'll give you an idea. So this okay. is a document. And the idea behind the company is it's ah, magnification I got down, you. magnification up. Has a lot of lighting behind it. Got you. And then you can change the color ah of the contrast. contrast. I like that. So although this is a standalone unit called the Go that a student or a senior would have and take you know class to class, library, mm -hmm. church, Zoom Text would do that same magnification on the PC. Oh, to good make sir. A computer user uh, efficient or uh, productive, and you can use that in school or on your own. And those products work with your regular, like your LinkedIn or your Teams, Zoom. So YouTube. really being able to kind of help. Correct. That way you're participating, right? Yeah. Because you're losing the vision doesn't mean you can't use the technology. And then you come to the traditional magnifiers. These are like, you know, the old big and small. Mm -hmm. You don't need any real experience. It's just how far are you from the table. I'm getting to the point now where I carry this in my pocket mm -hmm. and I just slide it open. I and got you. That's lighting. nice. And I'm able to do this. Would be I use this a lot, like I'm doing on my scratch lottery ticket. Yeah. Or I'm, or I'm in those restaurants where the lights real low. Yes, I sir. See the receipt. Yes, sir. Just bang. What's the total? And I shut it up, put it in my pocket. I like that. Same idea, but you're in a larger format. This is under the Enhanced oh, like Vision that. brand. And again, changing oh, color. Oh, that's nice. And I'm just going to move it so you see. This is the that's flyer nice. for the for the jaws, and, and whatever you move. It literally just, and you can change the color and contrast. That's nice. And this folds up flat. And we do the same thing in a smaller screen, a five inch screen. So again, low vision to no vision. And although we don't have it here, we even make larger work uh, desktops. That you okay. Can like a, an agency where we actually incorporate OCR, which is text to speech. Mm. So even though this won't talk on those larger models, you can touch the screen. The camera will take a picture of the material. And then and it'll be able it to read it out to you. Good stuff. Right, right. right. That's awesome. kind of what we do in a nutshell. Awesome. Well, I certainly appreciate that, sir. Um, I sent you a message because of uh, what Jeff was saying. So that I oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I uh, sent you uh, some videos and random things as I was kind of well, I'm How you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? I can't complain one bit. All right. What do we have here? Hey there. I'm Sherry with AmRamp. So we provide uh, modular wheelchair ramps. We provide stair lifts, vertical platform lifts. Uh, we also have portable showers. Anything to make the house accessible for you to be able to get into your home safely. Marvelous. And this is going to be an example of some yes, of the construction so of the ramp. This is ramps. what it looks like. We have an expanded metal. The ramp is all steel. Okay. So that allows for that rainwater to pass through. And you all are able to come out and do evaluations to yes. see what's going to work, how much I need, and kind of give me an out idea of what the timeline will be as well. That's right. All of our evaluations are free of charge. We just we we like to do a quick review over the phone, so you okay. know our price ranges. Gotcha. But otherwise, if that's okay, then we come on site for free and lay it out for you. All right. Well, I certainly appreciate it. All Thank right. you. Thank
shaker for somebody we who needs it. We might have one not with us today, but at our facility. Yeah, because it's kind of thing like there's a lot out there. I don't I don't know. Yeah. I, I like to borrow stuff from you guys. Because oh, yeah. Everything's so expensive, too. Yep. So, fuck magnifying things. Some of the items that you all have here so that someone that might not have been able to make it today they can check out this YouTube video yeah, and hopefully they'll idea. be motivated to come next year or at the very least get in contact with you and say, hey, I saw a video about what you all <laughs> offer and I yeah. am interested. I'm sure that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. How you doing? Doing well. Good. Just taking a look at some stuff. Yeah. Switches as well. I don't know if you're familiar with these power packs. Yeah, these are the, again, it's a sign of change. Okay. So, for those who like the order to feed back from the switch, something like this also helps. Doesn't stop it happening. But then, then there's. Um, are you familiar with the No, it's fun. I've right. seen some stuff before. Right. Right? Um, but there's. Um, and that's how a child um, might participate in shared reading with Brown Bear Brown Bear with their eyes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the, and the company. We have the Center for Disability Resources Library. Oh, I gotta look down. Hello. Greetings. Oh, I just saw one of these. Yeah. On a vid that is so cool. This that will spin around, right? Yeah, it's got oh, a little yeah. gimbal on it to make it easy for uh, me yeah. to take videos. Yeah, so. I saw a video. I think it's in Rome. Hmm. And it's it had just rained, so the, the ground is... Yeah, so you can get real low. And it rotates. Mm -hmm. They're part of the Center for Disability Resources. Awesome. And that QR code. 
will take you to our website. Okay. And it will also tell you about, in addition to the amazing assistive technology program, it will tell you about the other 10 projects we have at our center. Look at that. Focused on developments and related disabilities. Hey, I'm going to get very meta on you. Can Go I take it. a picture of that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to show some of the librarians. Osmo 3. Osmo DJ, 3. DJI Osmo 3. Oh, yeah. Yes. And this DJI is our VIV. Um, so, of course, we are the South Carolina Assistive Technology Program. Yeah. Um, the things that we provide is posted here. It's definitely important. I didn't, being able to identify things early on, because I can only imagine the type of impact that has. I know I was asking one of the gentlemen that was dealing with a um, traumatic brain injury, just from the standpoint of, all right, if I've had a traumatic brain injury, but I'm not aware. I work for the Transition Alliance of South Carolina, and we are a Department of Education, Office of Special Education Services, funded assistance center, primarily for local school districts and service providers, and we provide training, assistance, resources, and support in the area of high school special education or that transition from high school to adult life. Okay. So we also work on dropout prevention initiatives for um, supporting districts to help ensure that students graduate with a high school diploma. We're one of four technical assistance centers through the South Carolina Department of Education's South Carolina Team Center. They also include the Behavior Alliance of South Carolina, mm -hmm. the Academic Alliance of South Carolina, and South Carolina Partners for Inclusion, which is our early intervention network. So you can find out more by going to our website. Okay. TransitionAllianceSouthCarolina.org. Marvelous. So what it sounds like to me is that you all help with the transition from adolescence to adulthood right. and kind of smoothing that out from the standpoint of, okay, we understand you're being more independent, you're getting older and maturing, but we don't want you to um, feel as if you don't have the resources that you need in that transition. That's right. So Marvelous. help in making sure that school districts are adequately preparing students for gotcha. that transition from high school to adult life, be it college or careers or independent living, but then also making sure that those connections are put in place with other community service partners, such as the Grehab or the Department of Disabilities mm -hmm. and Special Needs. Mm -hmm. So who do we have here today and what do we have going on? This is the South Carolina Equipment Distribution Program okay. for the hearing impaired, deaf, low vision, or speech impaired. So we help individuals 
communicate with their family members and loved ones and friends okay. through these uh, through these devices. All these devices that we have, which is a host of many more, this is just a couple that we brought out, mm -hmm. to help individuals to communicate with loved ones, friends, and family members and their doctors more effectively. This program is at no cost. So okay. Because they're a South Carolina state resident. Good stuff. And if they have a current phone bill, whether it's cell phone or landline services, that is the only requirement they need to qualify for the program. Got it. And they just be able to contact you all with the number listed here or yes, at sir. the email, not the email, but the email address and the website. That website. is correct. And if they need an application, we can mail it to them. If they want to come to the office, because we're located downtown Columbia, 1401 Main Street, they can come to the office. And they actually, if they have everything, they can get the equipment their same day. Okay. Well, I certainly appreciate that. And I thank you for coming out. We have experts on the team that I can definitely refer to, but there are different laws kind of based on different businesses and state agencies can be different. There, it's um, kind of different details, but we can look into that and we would encourage you to have them reach out to us too directly because we, um, under like our independent living services or information referral, we can definitely um, help in some direct ways or give more resources. Exactly, exactly. Jennifer Wu, I am Director of Information Referral. Here at ABLE South Carolina, we are disability-led, that means most of our staff are people with disabilities. Um, disability advocacy nonprofit here at ABLE South Carolina. So we have a number of core services, but to really break it down, we have like peer support, both for youth, um, and then cross disability of any ages, virtually and online. We have some consumer training, picked by our consumers. Information referral, so if anyone's looking for information or resources, we can give that information to them in their area. Um, we help with transitions to adulthood and the traditions into the community from like nursing home and things like that because we believe in independence and being in the most inclusive community environment. Mm -hmm. um, we give trainings as well about disability culture and etiquette, which is part of how we advocate. So we have Advocacy Day going on Marvelous. in uh, what is it? April. And so we're really trying to bring up about the barriers that community faces in helping our nationwide uh, legislators understand and bring change that way. Got you. And so um, I think, is there anything else we haven't covered, Terry? That's a pretty general gist. So it seems like a comprehensive yeah. um, center that not only is able to assist but also put you in contact with other places that can assist as well exactly yes we empower we assist we connect we have assistive technology i mean we still do so much more but that's mm -hmm. still a pretty big pretty i think estimation of what we do marvelous well i certainly appreciate your time and you enjoy the rest of your day thank you, well, thank you. This one I'm gonna be looking at in November. Are you ready for me? I'm ready for you. All right, Hims Incorporated is the name of the company. Mm -hmm. And our, primarily we deal in electronic rail devices. Okay. Uh, although we do have some magnification devices. I don't have any on the table, but I do have an audio book reader it does a lot more than just read books got you but we've got two devices here um, the one i'm touching is called the braille sense 6 mm -hmm. and the one to its right is called the braille sense 6 mini 
Now what they do, actually are identical in nature. Mm -hmm. um, so by getting the mini, you don't give up anything in terms of... Just a smaller footprint. Smaller footprint and 12 fewer braille cells. Okay. Okay. So this one's a 32 cell model and it's the number of braille dot, you know, cells you see across here when you... Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I see file manager. Mm -hmm. um, and it talks at okay. the same time. So think of the, the this Braille Sense 6 as kind of the way you would think of a, a tablet like an iPad or a Google tablet. Got gotcha. you. I can do all the same types of things on it as you can on that. The, the differences are I get both speech and Braille output. And I also uh, have had apps developed that help to streamline productivity and workflow. Awesome. Um, for, for example... Um, Oh, we, right from within our file manager, you can browse to OneDrive or Google Drive or mm -hmm. Dropbox, you know, those cloud services like that. Yes, sir. You've got a, a text-based uh, Google search engine, which a lot of sighted people would like because it does away with all the scrolling banners and advertising. And really? So you, <laughs> all, you got some extra good features yes. on there. Uh, we actually even have our own chat GPT uh, option. Man, come on. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Um, so those are those. And this one here is more of a, uh, it's, it's, instead of being, quote, unquote, a note taker like these are considered. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, the, this is a, uh, a Braille display. It's a 40-cell it's Braille display that can connect to up to seven devices simultaneously. And you can okay. Between them on the fly. But the, so this main job of this device, although it has some internal functions like the ability to take notes and mm -hmm. calculator and things like that. Um, its main function is to connect to other things, so like iPads and so computers. sort of a centralized remote control. Well, except it's got a keyboard on it. See, that's nice. Um, instead of the the numbers and the letters you would be accustomed to on a regular computer keyboard, we have a Braille keyboard. Got gotcha. you. Yet we have all the extended QWERTY keys that you would have on a regular Macintosh or Windows keyboard. Got gotcha. you. Um, so what? that does it, 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 it's actually an ergonomic consideration because now instead of having to go back and forth between the keyboard and the braille display you can just do everything from here awesome <clears throat> so and the, the last thing i have on the table is a device called the, the sense player mm -hmm. and um basically it's a book reader gotcha uh, audio books but we also have support for audible um, you just download the Audible app and run it on here. Okay. Um, the same, it's just with a lot of different things. I can actually run a Zoom meeting from here because oh, that's nice. It has a camera and it has a stereo microphone, stereo speakers. Um, I can use an app called Google Lookout, which is uh, OCR, so I can take a picture of a document and and have it read back to me. Got you. So um, really, really uh, increasing the accessibility as far as you being able to do the things that you normally are doing and making them easier. Yeah, it's basically stream streamlining uh, productivity and workflow is what it's all about. And entertainment. Because, got well, you. I've got Apple Music on here and I've got Netflix. And oh, man, I love it. <laughs> all that stuff. So and most of the Netflix things, and a lot of the movies nowadays have descriptive audio with their videos. Yes, sir. So, so yeah, it's... Uh, it's a good time to be alive. All right. Well, I certainly appreciate that, <laughs> All sir. All right. You enjoy the rest of your day.
Oh, wow. Wow. So we're reading from... I, I don't even... Okay. That's what it's reading. That is amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> yes, sir. This a little pocket camera yeah. with a gimbal on it to keep everything stabilized, and I can I get up real close to stuff and get real low without getting. Up. Since we're in the company of Andre. Yes, Hi, I'm with the South Carolina Department of Aging. My name is Jolanda Bailey. What we do is offer resources and programs for seniors, adults with disabilities, and caregivers. Right here, we have a list of all of our items that we serve all across the state. We have 10 regional offices that cover all 46 counties. So if you ever need information regarding your loved one, your seniors, or if you want to just know what we do, please contact our agency at 1-800-868-9095. South Carolina Department on Aging. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thanks. How are you doing? Doing well. So you can just tell me a little bit about what you got going on. Okay, this is the Palmetto Able Savings Program. These are special savings and investment accounts that allow qualified individuals with disabilities to save money. And why these accounts are so important is that it doesn't jeopardize your eligibility for needs-based benefits such as Medicaid and SSI. So if an individual receives government needs-based benefits, you usually have a $2,000 resource limit. With a Palmetto Able account, you can save up to $18,000 a year and protect your benefits eligibility. Say, say, that, say that number again. <laughs> you can save up to $18,000 a year and maintain your benefits eligibility. Marvelous, so, marvelous, And the marvelous. program is administered by the state treasurer's office. We have a lot of information on our website, which is palmettoable.com. And I encourage you to visit our website and learn about our program. All Everything right. It's open and managed online. All right. Well, I certainly appreciate that. All right. Who do we have here today? Mary Margaret with Easter Seals and we're a national organization but we're the South Carolina affiliate. Okay. We serve the entire state of South Carolina. Um, we, we focus on the pediatric population so mm. we work with the kiddos and we have two divisions in which we provide our services. We have our early intervention division and we have our pediatric therapy division. We provide physical, speech, and occupational therapies. Okay, good stuff. And where would they need to go in order to contact you all? Yeah, go to our website, um, EasterSeals.com. That'll, that'll get you all the resources and information that you need. All right. Well, I certainly appreciate that. And you all enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. All right. Who do we have here today? So my name is Tyler Edmond. I am the Reader Advisor and Outreach Coordinator for Talking Book Services. So we are a free program with the State Library that offers audiobooks, braille, and large print for those who are blind, physically handicapped, and those with print disabilities like dyslexia, autism, and ADHD. Awesome. So these are going to be some of the items that you all have available, is that correct? So this is part of our assistive technology petting zoo. Mm -hmm. So this is a newly launched initiative. So we're going out to libraries and schools and showcasing how assistive technology can make their spaces more inclusive with, for those with disabilities. And if someone would need to get in contact with you all, what would they need to do or where would they need to go? No problem. So our information is right here. So our email is right there as well as our 1-800 number, but they can always visit us at our website. All right, and that's SC, let's see, sctalkingbook.org or 1-800-922-7818. Yeah. All right, well, I certainly appreciate that. And these are free services, correct? Yes, all free. Marvelous. All right, well, I thank you very much. Percent. All right, who do we have here today? Go ahead, darling. I'm Donna Grins. This is my husband, Bob Grins. We are both board members of Emanuel. Wheel. We provide access ramps for individuals who cannot afford the cost of the lumber or the labor. We have a uh, federal poverty level criteria that we would like for them to meet and we send out a team to 
uh, assess their situation, mm -hmm. provide a schematic or a, a what blueprint, we, blueprint mm -hmm. for them, and uh, we send out a team who provides an ADA compliant ramp that is mm. built with pressure treated lumber. Yes, ma'am. As a rule, that is finished in one day. Ooh, I like that. I like that. And in regards to getting in contact with you all, they would just need to call this 803-606-7551. That's oh, correct. And we got the website and email. We're also on Facebook. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. Well, I certainly appreciate all that you all have going on. And I hope this we're able to get this out to the right people. All right. And who do we have here? What are we looking at? <laughs> My name is Valerie Susnick. I am a regional consultant with PRC Saltillo. We are a device manufacturer. We specifically manufacture devices for individuals who have difficulty communicating or oh, who wow. are nonverbal. Okay. Um, so we have a variety of solutions that we offer. Um, the devices support everything from touch access to eye gaze um, to head tracking and switch scanning. Um, as a regional consultant, my role is to help teams identify which of these solutions fits their needs best and gotcha. then help them through the process of obtaining one, gotcha. um, whether it's through insurance benefits or through some other funding source. Marvelous. And if someone were interested in what you all have going on and just kind of wanted to get some more information or see if you know, what it is that you all offer is going to fit for them, where would they need to contact? Um, so they could go to our website. It's just www.prc-saltillo.com. Mm -hmm. um, and then once they're there, they can actually type in their zip code and it'll tell them who their consultant is. If they're in South Carolina, that's going to be me. Um, okay. But I also cover South Georgia. Um, and we have consultants in every state. So, okay. yeah, we're, we're world, well, we're global in that if uh, we are in other countries too, so we have support all over the place that they could access. Marvelous, so let me make sure that I got this right. So you said that was? PRC PRC Saltillo. Saltillo.com? Yes. Awesome. All right, well I thank you very much. You thank enjoy you so the rest much. of your day. You <laughs> Come on, give us feel. There's no spiel. See, there's no audio on this little recording. There is. <laughs> You don't have to say anything, but no. you can. No, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> um, you might want to take a catalog, though. I take am. Flyers. We're down to like two. So. Well, you can at least tell me what I'm looking at. How about that? Tell you what we're looking at. Yeah, I see some books. And how would these books be beneficial to my children or anyone with any type of disabilities? Well, so Attainment is a company that deals in... Lots of curriculum mm -hmm. for students who participate in alternate assessments or adults with disabilities. So mainly it is um, curriculum or some daily living skills, but then also like the things that you are getting on video right now. Um, we have quite a bit of assistive technology, some of it pretty low tech, mm -hmm. like this Go Talk Fit. Mm -hmm. Um, and then something like this app here, which is Go Talk Now, is much more, has lots of bells and whistles. It is simply an app for an iPad. It has lots and lots of communication pages and they're adjustable so I can make it one picture or 32 pictures. Marvelous. So this is going to help with my children's development and learning all the things that they need to learn in a yes. way that they can learn them. Yes. Look so at it that. It's all geared towards people with disabilities. Marvelous. Well, I certainly appreciate that. You are very welcome. And I see it looks like we've got a attainmentcompany.com as the contact information. Yes. And it looks like a 336-908-2737 is the phone number. That's my right. number. That's your oh, number? got a number too. All right. And then we got the 800 <laughs> number. We'll see. The 800-327-4269. Yes. That is the home office. Yeah. Marvelous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Catalog and a few flyers. Marvelous. Get this on here. This flyer has a lot of the, um, a lot of the products that you see here today. Marvelous. Well, I certainly appreciate. It. Control Bionics.
So if you don't mind, tell me what am I looking at now? So you're looking at assistive communication devices that can be used with eye gaze cameras and we have a wearable Bluetooth switch mm. for someone that might have challenge communicating. So people who might have ALS, a brain injury, cerebral palsy, um, anybody who needs a voice um, and needs a different access method for it. So, um, we tend to also help people who are medically complex. Okay. So this is one type of speech software. It's in categories. Oh, wow. Um, it can access, uh, I can pair a phone with it. Somebody could answer the phone and what they select here is what you hear in the phone. Nice. Um, so they could still call for emergencies. So like text to voice pretty much being able to. Exactly. Marvelous. But it's with the speech generating device and maybe they can't touch it, but they're mm -hmm. going to use the eye gaze camera. Oh, look. wow. Or we also have this wearable switch. You heard that beep. Mm -hmm. This is a switch, much, much like a mouse click, but it moves off of space. Okay. Or it can pick up muscle movements. So, so I can make a slight gesture and it'll still be able to communicate what I need it to communicate. Yep. So you hear that beep right there. I'm mm -hmm. just simply making this motion and that's telling the computer to select. I can make that motion as small or as big and we create the software to capture what the person can do physically. Wow. So you individualize and, and pretty much like whatever parameters that I have limitations with, you make certain that this is going to help within those parameters. Absolutely. And so Man, even, what the world. even too, <laughs> if somebody only can move their eyebrows, we mm -hmm. have sensors that can go straight above their eyebrow and they raise it. And then that's what tells the computer to work. Wow. Wow. So get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Thanks, software. Okay. okay. But it has to be what the person wants to communicate. So right. especially for kids, this is important. However, them having control over selecting videos for mm -hmm. Frozen or whatever they want that connects straight to YouTube and plays for them. So they can use their eyes to select or this neuro node to select. Now granted, the Wi-Fi is a little slow at the convention center, but it pulls, it's going to YouTube and will oh, pull wow. the video up. So they have control over picking once the ad goes, um, and I would suggest, hey, if you want to get rid of ads, maybe make a different solution. Yeah. Um, so it'll pull up the YouTube video that they've selected and had control over. That so, is amazing. Like, here you go. She was able oh, to make a, a connection. And she then wanted to explore all the speech software. Wow. So now it's piquing that curiosity and that interest about, hey, I got something that works for me. Let's use it more. Absolutely. And these are some of the devices that you all have available? These are, yeah, these are, we have so much. If we don't, we don't, we can't buy it, we'll keep it. Mm -hmm. So we have resources with the books, the smart pens, the scanning pens, the keyboards, any adaptive, um, any adaptive items that we can get online. I need a reward system for a job well yeah. done. I can make one for you. I need all of that. I can make one for you, it'll be great. <laughs> yes, that is nice. Let me see. That is it. All right, so we are here with the hanger clinic. Fellas, what am I looking at? So we do orthotics and prosthetics. So any bracing going from custom foot orthotics all the way up to the hip as well. I mean, uh, any braces, foot drop. This is for scoliosis. Okay. Little babies with um, maybe some flattening of the head called plagiocephaly. Okay. 
more to our higher active AFOs. So um, a lot of military get these when they're coming back. They oh wow! To continue to run. Ah, I got you. I got injuries. you. That's carbon fiber. Yeah, it is. Man, get out of here. <laughs> And then just little AFO, especially for little kiddos that maybe are walking on their toes or just have some of that foot drop. Okay. And then we go into the, the prosthetic world, so maybe, I mean, we have a lot of amputations in this city. Yes, sir. Diabetes, so you got to get them back up and walking as well as a prosthetic hand. And if somebody needs to get in contact with you all, <laughs> so where now, would so they go? So we're a national company with 800 offices. But locally, we're here in Columbia and then... Camden and Orangeburg. So we're down behind the Township Auditorium as well as we do some a lot of PT groups and everything like that. Okay. All right. Well, I certainly appreciate it. And I'm glad yeah, that you all were you. able to make it today. All right. South Carolina School of the Deaf and Blind. All right. What do we have going on today? Hi there. I'm Marcy Meacham with the South Carolina Deaf Blind Project. We are an outreach through the school for the deaf and blind up in Spartanburg. Okay. And um, we work with children and individuals birth through 21 who have both hearing and vision loss. Mm -hmm. And um, we are federal grant, also supported by the school for the deaf and blind. And we provide materials, programming, training for both families and districts to help them support students with dual sensory loss. Marvelous. And if someone needed you all services, where would they need to go or what number would they contact? If they go to the South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blind under both the deaf services and visually impaired services, there is a drop down menu and there's a page for the, the deaf blind project. Got you. And I don't seem to have any more of my cards. Oh, that's all right. So that's going to be the scsdb.org? Yes. yes. And, then, and then, and I think I'm done. But then we represent the campus program. Really? In Spartanburg. We're celebrating our 175th. Well, congratulations! And um, so we have an application process. I can give you that too. Okay. And on our table, we have assistive some, technology. Yeah, of the assistive technology that we use specifically over at the School for the Blind. Okay. And what we have here is our iPad, and um, we have the screen reading software that's built into the iPad already called VoiceOver. And at the school, we teach our students how to use voiceover because they just won't know how to do that on their own. What we also have connected is the Focus 40, which there's a vendor here, refreshable braille display. Mm -hmm. And so we have it connected, and if you look really close, it's reading whatever our voiceover box is on right now on our device. Wow. We also are showing our students how to type using a refreshable braille display and a brailler so i'll show you this is our 3d printed brailler right here wow. and so this is what they use to type and this is the code that they use to type so like a is dot one one two is b and they can use this refreshable braille display to type so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to press dot seven mm -hmm. and i'm going to delete everything that is on the refreshable braille and on my screen I'm not there yet. I'm almost there. <laughs> Getting there. And we're going to select, select. Cool. So our students can type like A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. And that disappeared. <laughs> Sorry, give me a second. No problem. I think it's still trying to catch up from all the backspacing that That's I no was problem. doing. I'm going to turn voiceover off. I'm going to turn it back on. Sometimes it just it has a moment, and then we restart. Okay, let's try again. I'm going to look for the cursor is what I'm doing. Okay, so there's the cursor right there, which mm -hmm. is the blinking cursor there. So now I'll do my typing. A whole bunch of nothing. Let me try this. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just tired. There we it's been go. a long day. <laughs> That's no problem. 
It's just tired. Um, and then what we also have here are some of our 3D printed items that we make at the school. Okay. So we are making, this is the home screen of an iPad, and mm -hmm. we teach our students about the home screen by feeling it. So like, this is the top left, this gotcha. is an app, and we teach them some of the voiceover skills. So if we use our one finger and we swipe right with a flick, we're gonna jump from this app to this app. Gotcha. We can teach them shortcuts to go to the very last app. And so we say the very last app is on the bottom right in the dock is what mm -hmm. they call it. We also 3D print um, name tags for their braille, for their white canes. Mm -hmm. And we have some money embossers that they can um, emboss their money and have the currency of their bills on. Gotcha. Um, and that's so just a variety fun. of different items to help make life more usable, user-friendly, and a little bit more easy. Yeah. Marvelous. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That is a light to go with the magnifier. Uh, actually, does it have a camera? No, that's just a light. Okay. Um, and then we have some of our different uh, types of glasses and different frames, as well as lenses to help correct certain visual impairments. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And she is currently away right now at a session. However, uh, Ginny is our low vision specialist. Gotcha. I am an assistant technology consultant, so gotcha. I deal with more of the technology. So if you have any visually impaired or blind technology questions, mm -hmm. I'm your gal. And you can tell me who we have here and what we got going All on. All right, awesome. Well, hello. My name is Hayward Clayton. I work for Camp Cole. We are a camp and retreat center for children, teens, and adults with illnesses, disabilities, and other life challenges. So we are located in Eastover, South Carolina, just about 20 to 25 minutes from downtown Columbia. And really in the summer, starting in June, is when we serve overnight camps Monday to Friday. Each week is kind of a different population served. And then in the off season from September to May, we host more of retreats, day camps, family weekends, and business retreats. So yeah, that is a little bit about us. We have been around since about 2020 and 2021 was the first year we saw campers. You can always learn more and volunteer by just going to www.campcole.org and follow us on social media at Camp Cole South Carolina. Look at you. <laughs> Ooh, I see something about an oyster roast here. Oh, yes. We've got that coming up just a week from Thursday, actually. Marvelous, marvelous. <laughs> well, I certainly appreciate all yeah, this wealth of, of information. Thank you for putting it out there. Yes, ma'am. Who are we with today? I am Ashley Williams. Um, this is our organization, Rich Legs Disabilities and Special Needs Board. I provide a head and spinal cord injury case management, and we also provide services for um, children, EI, ages zero through six, and um, case management for all the way up until 106. Marvelous. So it looks like what we have is Let's see, rldsn.org is the contact. And then 803-252-5179 is the phone number. Yep. All righty, well, I certainly appreciate that. Battery is dying. All right, and who do we have here with us today? I'm doing well. Good. Um, I'm Andrea Porter, and I am the director of successful transitions with the National Federation of the Blind of South Carolina. Okay. And what do we have going on as far as what people can expect from what it is that you all offer? 
So we provide pre-employment transition services okay. to students that are visually impaired or blind through the South Carolina Commission for the Blind. And then we also provide these same services through um, vocational rehabilitation in private and home schools for ages 13 to 21 year olds. Oh, so you all are linked in trying to help get from adolescence to adulthood nice and smooth. That's right. That's right. Okay. Absolutely. So would I need to already be linked in with these facilities or would we need to get in contact with you all if... So you can contact the South Carolina Commission for the Blind, um, okay. or you can contact Successful Transitions with the National Federation of the Blind, um, and um, we will get you where you need to be. All right. Well, I certainly appreciate that. All right. All right thank thank you. you. How are you doing today, I'm sir? Doing fantastic. How about yourself? Man, I can't complain one I bit. Just going that. around to the different booths, the different vendors, it's seeing what we got. I'll be putting this up on our YouTube page so that anyone that is not, had, was not able to make it today, they can at the very least see what they missed. That's important, man. You gotta include everybody. Yeah, you know? I got about three percent battery left. Uh, Tell me what we got going on, man. Who am I speaking with? My name is Malik from Palmer Vision. Uh, we're located out of Atlanta, Georgia, but we cover the East Coast. Um, we start with our wearables for magnification. We also do portable CCTVs and handhelds, as well as full, OC full OCR and um, Braille products. Marvelous. So, and if someone wanted to get in contact with you, that's going to be the information listed right here. Man, I appreciate it. And you can do an e-gift card. And you just put the card amount in. And then it says buy now. And it, it hooks to your um, it hooks to your account. Your, like your bank account. Yeah. And then um, you do that way. Or you can add it to the card. Greetings, how are you all doing? Great, how are you? I'm doing well, just going through documenting some of the vendors here as far as what we have available. I love it. Anything that you'd like to say on this last 1% of my battery before it dies? Come to us with your speech device needs, of course. Talk and do you, do you have a contact phone number or website that they can reach you at? Yes, please contact me at my phone number of 319 464-1107 and my name is Wyatt Franken. Marvelous.